Here in the store, we have multiple viewing angles. It's not just going to be the patio. It's going to be over there in front of the paludarium. It's going to be from this vantage point over here. So 360 degrees, I want people to be able to appreciate this waterfalls. So what I did was is I created a series of splits coming out of the biofalls itself. The water will come through here and gather in this pooling area, but it's also going to split down through here as well as come down through here. That's only going to be about a four or a six inch waterfalls coming in there. But what I want to do is by creating all this different movement, Movement, it will make a 15 inch tall waterfall feel like it's four feet in somebody's backyard because of all the movement and the misdirection and it also capitalizes on all of our viewing angles here in the store. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So the stairs are done. Eric, our newest member to Team Aquascape, killed it on the stairs with Jack and some other guys over there, but they look really, really good. I love the transition and how that's gonna come up into the patio. So we're about ready to actually start digging this pond, but a couple things you wanna think about before you start setting up your pond is what's the purpose of the pond? For this specific pond, we really wanna create this kind of intimate setting area over here. So one of the key elements is gonna be the patio that sits here. When I'm laying out the patio, I'm thinking of how is that patio going to be used and so if people are walking up into here I don't want to have a patio so small that the chairs block the traffic area so I really want to make sure that those chairs are gonna sit back here one of the key things you can do if you're kind of trying to figure out how big of a patio you want is buy the furniture or measure out the furniture you need set that out in your yard and then figure out how that traffic pattern would lay around it here I know I'm just gonna do two really comfy Anirondack style chairs maybe something even a little different that it has some swivels on it maybe a little coffee table in front and then still leave enough room for traffic to come in front now that I've got my patio figured out and this is roughly about an eight foot circle right in here. Now I know what kind of space I have left over for my pond. We also really wanted to show that eight by 11, seven by nine ish style pond. So what I normally do is I take a garden hose and lay it out with a garden hose. Because I'm in the sand, I just started drawing with my foot kind of the curves I wanted to create. If I don't like them, I can sweep them away and draw again with my foot. But we'll come in here like this. I really want to bring the pond right up onto this side. I have this feeling that parents are gonna be over here sitting down like this taking pictures of their kids hand feeding the fish over there or vice versa kids are gonna be over here feeding the fish the mom and dad can be over on the patio getting some of these great memory type shots of their children inside the retail store here so I bring the pond right up close to this sunken patio over here I come over here I go like this and then once I've figured out my shape, then I'll mark it out with paint. The other thing you're gonna do, especially with a kit, so we're using an eight by 11 foot kit. I'm gonna build a seven by nine foot pond though out of what is supposed to be an eight by 11 foot pond. And the reason I like to go a little bit smaller is because I hate when the liner handcuffs me to creativity saying I can't go a little bit further with a rock this way or a little bit further with a rock this way. As I get over into, let's say this area over here, I might wanna dig in a big rock back into this side. If I didn't have the liner to come all the way back behind this rock, then I don't get the option to do that. And then I'm forced to stick with the footprint here. So we're gonna use the eight by 11 kit to build a seven by nine foot pond. Another easy trick, take your paint, figure out where you want the pond to be up on one side, measure over nine feet this way. I'm using my feet because it's easy. I put a dot here. I know I can't come any further than this point here. So I'd put a dot here and I'd walk off 
my seven feet this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I know I can bring my pond up into this area and I'll still have plenty of liner left to handle all that. With these four dots, it actually creates an invisible rectangle. As long as I leave all of my curves and my lines inside that invisible rectangle, I know my liner is gonna be big enough. The second I take my lines outside of that invisible rectangle, I'm gonna be short of my liner. So we've got our shape. We have one option with this pond and I keep going back and forth. If this is my patio right here, there's two ways I can bring the pond up to it. I can either bring the pond so it comes right up like this and like this. So the patio hangs out over the pond. That keeps the shape of my patio. So I'll have a perfect eight foot circle or I can take the pond and come like this which then has the pond take a bite out of the patio. I like both. I'm not sure which one we're gonna do. You guys keep watching to find out how we make our decision. decided on the layout of the pond, we place the components, and that's very important that we do that right out of the gate so that we can get the biofalls and the skimmer placed where they're going to be located on the project. The biofalls is gonna sit directly where I'm at. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing sunk into the ground. We'll build about a 15 inch tall waterfall coming out of this thing. So we wanna make sure that we set it at the appropriate height. The other thing we wanna consider is where we are putting it on the pond. We wanna have it on the opposite side of the pond from the skimmer to allow for ideal circulation. So the reason we wanna have it on this side of the pond and the skimmer on the opposite opposite side of the pond is we want that water to be drug all the way across the pond, basically maximizing the circulation on this pond and really having it function to its fullest potential. If we put the skimmer and the biofalls right next to each other, what would happen is the biofalls, which is where the waterfall starts, comes out and that water goes immediately into the skimmer. We want to draw all of that water across the entirety of the pond, really maximizing the functionality of the skimmer as well. So we've got the fabric and liner in. Excavation is obviously complete. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna focus our energy inside the pond, which is creative part. This is the part that we really get excited about, where we can start putting rocks in. And what's really cool about this pond is we are going to incorporate a brick wall inside the pond to get that patio to sit right on top of it. So you bring the water edge right up to the viewing space. Really, really cool effect. It's gonna be a small wall, but what's neat about it is it will make this patio feel that much more intimate. If you can sit on the edge, dangle your feet in, feed the fish, it's so, so cool. So we're gonna work on that. I'm gonna go ahead and get the skimmer hooked up and those guys will start on that wall.
everybody. This is day two inside the retail store pond that we're building. We got the excavation done yesterday. We got our brick wall. We've got a majority of the pond rock. Now we are into the top half of the pond. So what that means is we are gonna get into the waterfalls today, but also start working on some of those really key elements that we wanted to incorporate into this pond, such as the beach, which is where I'm standing at right now. Very, very important that when we're doing this, we're taking into account water level. And we're going to need to frame out that gravel to keep it from migrating side to side as well as down into the pond. So I'm just simply digging out an area where the beach is going to go. And then I will come off of the big rock here inside the pond with another frame rock and kind of frame out the side of the beach closest to the patio. And then I will let the waterfall stones dictate where the, the other rocks come in on the opposite side. So we still have a lot of work left to do, but I'm super excited about getting it done today, which is the goal is so that you guys can see the water run. the last step before we finish up the waterfalls and that's hooking the liner up to the biofilter. This is a 2500 biofalls. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the liner to the lip and then be done with it so I can finish piecing my waterfalls back together. The reason I wanna stop you here is just to explain to you, this is a 2500 biofalls. This is a upgrade from the standard biofilter that's going to come in the eight x 11 or that smaller pond kit. We just wanted to go with the 2500 just to simply show an upgrade here in the store. This isn't gonna make or break your project if you don't have the 2500 and you are going with the 1000 series, you could simply use that small DIY pond kit for all of your ecosystem pond needs for some of these smaller pond applications. It's essentially a plug and play system, so all the components in that box are everything you would need to be able to pull something like this off. I'm gonna go ahead and just upgrade the filter so that we can show this in the store. This is an inspiration center here and we wanna be able to show all the bells and whistles, so that's a big reason why we're doing the 2500 on this. Not really because of any functionality reasons or anything like that, we just wanted to showcase it. Also while we're right here, we all know that the waterfalls is kind of the, the fingerprints on a water feature. It's, it's what's going to give it that signature look. That's another big reason why we went with the 2500 versus the 1000 biofalls. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier. It allows me to make a bigger waterfalls, but also push a little bit more water up through it to create a little bit more elaborate waterfalls with splits and that kind of stuff. Just wanted to point that out at this point in the video so nobody got confused so that while we're building this killer waterfalls, you can understand why we're doing what we're doing and how some of the different come to be. So as you guys know, a big motivation of this video is to showcase our small ponds, but huge impact. A lot of the videos you see us do are these large elaborate projects, but we can't stress enough how important these smaller ponds and how much more applicable they are to the standard backyard. These can fit virtually anywhere in all of your standard postage stamp size lots. So the big reason we're shooting this video is we wanted to show how we can take such a small pond or a small space and elevate it to its fullest potential. So now that you guys heard that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking and get to the, one of the final steps and that's hooking up the biofalls.
the point now where we're working on the patio space. We created a space not unlike any of our backyards out there, large and small. And when we're always designing water features, we always want to make them, bring them as close to the gathering spaces, the outdoor living spaces, to make it as intimate and as experiential as possible. This inside our retail store is not unlike anything we would design or do outside. Right now, Dan is working on screening out the sand, which will be the base for the brick patio that we're going to bring right up over top of that brick wall that you saw inside the pond. The pond is now done and filling. While that's happening, Dan is going to start on the patio with Juan and Jack and I are going to help with that once we get some of the little loose ends buttoned up. And then hopefully by the end of the day, we won't only have the patio done, the waterfall will be done and you guys can really see what the space is looking like. So over here, you can see Dan's going ahead and leveling off his base. Remember, everything in here is sand. In outdoor application, you would want to do six to eight inches of aggregate base material and then some bedding sand on top of it so you get a nice level surface. But he's working on that. Let me show you a couple things that we added on to the pond. One of them was this patio pond. These come in three different sizes. This is the small size of the circle patio pond. It's the green slate color. We were going to do a spillway bowl that has a little snout on it that are actually sitting right behind me. However, we don't have any more in the warehouse currently and they're all on back order. So we audibled and went with one of our smaller patio ponds just to showcase how we can use this product in a unique way off the edge of the pond to add some visual interest over here close to the pond. Then we have, of course, the waterfall that you guys saw us button up, but overall the pond is done. We are just waiting on the pond to completely fill to finish up some of these edges on this near side. But by and large, we're 99% done with the pond. Now it's time to do all the finishing touches and get the patio done. So speaking of the waterfall, just want to take a real quick second and kind of talk to you about what I am anticipating this waterfall to look like. So as I'm building it, here's where my head went. Here in the store, we have multiple viewing angles. It's not just going to be the patio. It's going to be over there in front of the paludarium. It's going to be from this vantage point over here. So 360 degrees, I want people to be able to appreciate this waterfalls. What I don't want to have happen is everything to be viewed at the same time or from one angle. So what I did was is I created a series of splits coming out of the biofalls itself. The water will come through here and gather in this pooling area, but it's also going to split down through here as well as come down through here. So you cannot see this waterfall from over there or over there, but you can see that one. You can see this little waterfall from back over at this angle. Then it's gonna rip through here, come down, meet up with this waterfall, and then come over the main falls that's into the pond. That's only gonna be about a four or a six inch waterfalls coming in there. But what I wanna do is by creating all this different movement, it will make a 15 inch tall waterfall feel like it's four feet in somebody's backyard because of all the movement and the misdirection and it also capitalizes on all of our viewing angles here in the store. This is facing back towards the main viewing area and the reason we did that is we really want to have all that audible and visual energy facing back towards where people are going to be interacting with this space. Very rarely is anybody going to come up here and sit right next to the waterfall. They're going to go back in the Adirondack chairs or the lazy boy that's sitting on the patio or in the three season room looking back at the waterfall to enjoy that. So we want to make sure all the movement, all the energy is facing back that way. One thing that I really like about the design of this space and what we're ultimately intending to do with some of the other elements, not just the pond, but some of the other elements that we are going to incorporate into this display is that we're really trying to make it feel intimate and enclosed. We're going to be putting some six by six posts with some wall art as kind of a partition. We're going to be blocking off this backside, not unlike we would in any other backyard landscape where we really want to make this thing feel nice and natural in here. So we're gonna block off a lot of this stuff back here where you're at, back over where Jack is, in order to make this thing feel so much more intimate and at home in this confined space.
got the finishing touches going in. You can see the green, we've got the mulch. We are almost so, so very close, almost wrapped on this seven by nine foot exquisite pond. It just turned out incredible. We've got our patio and it turned out great. We've got it cantilevered out over that brick wall. Swapped out the patio pond and put in one of the spillway bowls right off the side. That's being fed by the same pump that's feeding the waterfalls. We've got a 4,000 to 7,000 gallon per hour SLD, which is a solids handling pump sitting in the skimmer box there. You can see how we've got that nice disguise. We've got some of our faux driftwood back there as well. We've got a piece draped in front of the opening of the skimmer and that really disguised that skimmer box. Just love how it's turning together. We've got some touch up paint that we have to do up here on some of those edges at the top. Just button this up and then we are going to have hanging art pieces in between all of these different partitions. And of course we have the triolieres up top that really gives it that magical feel. They just kick on as I'm sitting here talking to you and it wholly enhances the space and gives it a completely different dimension within the lighting in here. Turned out great. We've got to put some paper sand down in the joints down in here. You can see one sweeping up, get that sanded, and then we are in the home stretch, almost, almost there. Looks awesome.